This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Your Model Life. I have friends from many different backgrounds, and some of them grew up in mixed cultures. From their input and from my own travels, I can see a wide variety of models of living. There are cultural differences around how and when people dine, treatment of elders and children, what is an appropriate attitude, how to treat a stranger, religious tolerance, courtship, and just about every aspect of social life. We start life with a very limited view of how things are to be done. We automatically think the way our family does things is the right way, and likely the way it is done around the world. It is only as we see and hear how others do things that we can broaden our view. Even in our own culture, there are better and poorer ways to do things. To live our best life, we need to be schooled in the right ideas, choices, attitudes, words and behaviours that make for the wisest living. For that, we usually need good mentors. Someone with a wise mentor can advance socially, economically and with health and well-being, while others with the same opportunities struggle and fail. What a mentor provides is direction to the wiser choices and ways of doing things. They might also goad us to doing right. A sports coach not only tells the team what is best, but forces them to put in the extra effort. Just knowing what we should do is not enough for most people. Most of us know areas we should work on, but we are not forced to do so, so we don't. As a Christian, you can be lazy, selfish, ignorant, opinionated, foolish, irresponsible, wasteful, rebellious, and your own worst enemy, and not be aware how bad you are. You may think the way you live is fine, while others see you are way below ideal. The Word of God, preachers, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit within us are keys to get us out of muddy living into living your model life. So, let me take part in that and suggest that the model you are working to is likely not God's ideal lifestyle for a Christian. What would your model life look like if it was crafted toward God's best? It would be filled with relationship with God. As God's child, you would be constantly talking with God with an open line of communication. You would tell God what you were thinking, ask Him for His input and hear His promptings. You would enjoy being with God and with God's people. You would have many times each week when you connected with fellow believers and shared your mutual enjoyment of God. You would bless them and encourage them, and they would bless and encourage you. You would love God's Word and read it every day, reading through the Bible regularly, so godly things are continually sown into your life. That might be enriched by listening to recordings of the Bible or Bible songs and hearing Bible preaching. You would try to be around people whose walk with God is as sweet as yours or sweeter. You would want to be encouraged by hearing what God is doing in their life and having them delight in what God is doing in yours. You would meet all kinds of people, but ensure believers are included. Your faith will be practical and lived out day by day. You would avoid being caught up in theological or philosophical issues that took you away from being a practical blessing to those around you. You would practice loving and blessing others to fulfill the second greatest command. You would be concerned for the lost and for God's kingdom growing everywhere. You would pray about that and engage with and encourage those who are active in winning people to Christ and building God's kingdom. You would be generous in blessing others and in supporting the work of God's people. Your wealth and possessions would be tools for living for Christ, not treasures to lock away for yourself. You would be wise about what you give, when and where, but you would certainly find it easy to give and bless others. You would be friendly, kind, caring and gracious. However, you would also be strong to take a stand for what is right, even opposing people others are afraid to challenge. You would be diligent and reliable, trustworthy and truthful, responsible and hard-working, respectful of people and property, and a good example to all. In all of that, you would rely on God first and foremost. You are a person of faith, so faith will be the platform for all you do. You'll be faithful, but also ready to step out in faith, or stand in faith, always upholding confidence in God to keep you and bless you. There are many more things that could be added to this, but let me stop here and ask how the model of your life matches up. 
Are you living for God's kingdom, or have you been seduced to live for the world, trying to make for yourself the happiest and most comfortable life you can? Many people have a model life built around the comfort and privacy they want, the peace and quiet they want, the entertainment they want, and the food and treats they want, just as they want them. They see money, time, and resources as for their pleasure, first and foremost. They may have room for others and for God, but only secondary to them living for self and pleasing their heart's desires. That's the humanist, self-worshipping model of life. It's the model life most of us have promoted to us by our culture, advertising, music, and movies. It's easy, then, to try to live the best Christian life we can, while also trying to maximize our humanist hopes. That's when we end up serving two masters, and fail at truly serving either. You are designed and destined to live for God, and have the best possible life by doing so. Friends, I can't coach each of you, so I will never know how your life stacks up. What I do know is what is best for you, and that's to live by faith totally sold out to God. Yet, such a life can be absolutely normal, with family, home, job, and all the nice things of life, with God's reality as the foundation under it all. I urge you to go over the description I've given here several times and prayerfully ask God to challenge and prompt you to change where needed. And ask God for mentors and coaches who can help you make the practical changes for complete transformation. As you yield to God, may your life be wonderfully blessed as you live out God's true prescription for your model life. God bless you.